We've got a jam-packed, I got here. Yes. Straight from the presses, all the cool stuff. We have like a thousand billion sessions, is that right? Mm -hmm. I think like 14, but pretty much. Okay, yeah. okay, that's mm -hmm. that's around the same ballpark yeah, if you're looking much. at large numbers. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, it's time to welcome Sandra from Germany and David from South Africa as they show us how you can connect Java with Power Apps. Magic. Over to you, Sandra and David. Great, thanks. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, it's so great to have you. On our session, connect your Java app with Power Apps. My name is Sandra Algrim. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. You can find and follow me on Twitter at sgrimmelt. I'm in the Java team here. And as I'm no Power Apps expert at all, I invited David van Herden. He is a Power Apps MVP. You can find and follow him on Twitter at Dave's Tech Tips. He works as a modern workplace director at Ukuvuma Solutions. And you can also find and uh, follow his YouTube channel where he um, adds some tricks and tips for Power Apps. So we're going to start with the different possibility we have to deploy our Java apps on Azure. And then we're going to focus on a very common scenario and deploy one REST API on Azure. After that, I will hand over to David, who's going to do um, the viewing part of my data because I'm going to pretend or I'm not going to pretend I am a back end developer. So I, I love creating REST services and put the API there. And then I have this um, Swagger JSON or open API specification and I'm fine with that. But you know what? The business people, they want to have it even more pretty. They want to see the images. We are actually just giving the URLs there. So I'm very, very glad that the expert David is going to help me with that and using Power Apps for this. So let's start with Java on Azure. Java is the second most used language among enterprises on Azure. So you can deploy all kinds of Java apps like Java, Java EE or Jakarta or even Spring apps. You can um, use virtual machines for that or you deploy it inside a container. You could also use managed services like Zulu or Tomcat. And you could also leverage from the new serverless opportunities, or not very new, but from the serverless opportunities like Azure Functions and Logic Apps. And as I said, today we're going to focus on a very common example, which is going to be the Spring Boot application or the Spring application on Azure. And we have, and I don't want to just use a hello world, so I will generate an application with jhipster. So it's going to be a very common scenario, just not a hello world example, but a, you know, a more real world use case, I would say so. And as we have 2020, I don't want to care about OS and Java installation, so I would just use Azure App Service for that. So let's go right ahead with the first demo where I'm going to generate the jhipster app and add an entity in order to build my REST API service. So I'm here with my Visual Studio Terminal, Visual Studio Code Terminal, and I would just create a new folder, call it maybe Hello J Hipster, and then dive into it. Previously, previously I installed J Hipster. You can either do it with Homebrew or npm. There we go. I just entered J Hipster, and now I can choose which application I want to generate. And I would just stick with the monolithic application because that would, should be good for my demo here. I don't need to have it reactive and I would just call it Hello J Hipster. Default package name is all right for my testing. I can choose between authentication types because it will be all built for me. And we're just gonna use the simple JWT token. I will use for for development, the H2 SQL, and for the production one, I will use the MySQL. And yeah, we also have different Spring Cache opportunities, but as we just do a demo, I will stick with no cache. And then we can also apply other technologies like the Open API thing, or Open API solution, which is gonna generate the Swagger JSON just for me. And that's awesome because then we can use the custom connector later on. I don't need anything else, so I just press no. And then 
JHipster will generate the whole application for me with authentication in place, um, database abstraction, and so on. And I can also do it directly on start.jhipster.tech. So I'm doing it right now. I can um, connect it to my GitHub or GitLab. I will enter the application name. And here I can choose with this very exact same options. So I can choose between a monolithic or microservice opportunity, stick with the monolithic one. I can add the company or package name here. I can also choose the port name. I don't need the JHipster registry right now. Authentication in place, database in place, good. I don't need the cache abstraction for my demo here, but I, I can have the cache if I want to also generate it. I will stick with Maven and then again use the API first development because then it will generate the Swagger JSON for me as well. And we will see in a bit how I can just copy paste it then later on in my Power App. For client side, we will just use Angular, but it's going to be just a small client where I can see and add and change my, my data. So, and then I can just generate on uh, GitHub. But before I do it, I would just change the application name to make it more lively. And you could also access it right now or in a few seconds. So let me change the port as well. I don't want to have it all on the same port in order to run in parallel. And I can also test another, use another testing opportunity. I could download it in zip file or I would just generate it on GitHub. There you go. It's generated and you can exit it with this link. Here it is. It's just generated for me. Great. And I said I will also need an entity. And what JHipster offers me is also a JDL Studio. And it has some examples, but they're a bit too complex for our simple API. So I would just cut that out and create a new product entity. Oh, look who's there. And yeah, enter some things like the title and the description and something. Yeah, what can we need as well? So let's go with description first and then the rating. And then I would also like to add an image URL. Great, I would just stick with string because that prevents us from other issues we might have, you know, with dealing with different languages. So in this entity, I can save that and I can also download it, but I could also apply this to my GitHub repository. I would just save it first of all. And then I'm going to apply it to my GitHub repository just created a few seconds ago. So here's my GitHub, the JHipster sampler app. I would just apply it right now. Great. So that worked. And let's see what it did. I mean, you can also see the code changes. You can check out my GitHub for that. Or I would just show it right here. So I have my Visual Studio code. And here you can see my product Java. I have the title, the description, the rating, the image URL, and also the product resource where you can see I have the API, which offers me slash API slash product with the get requests or get mappings for all products or just for one product with the ID. And I can also delete it here. Great. So let's deploy this app on Azure. And it's going to be very simple for sure because we do have a Maven plugin for that and it's already integrated in JHipster. So what I can do and what JHipster allows me to is just enter JHipster Azure App Deploy, no, Azure App Service because I want to deploy it on Azure App Service. And now I just have to specify some things like the Azure resource group name and you could even skip that one if you do the the command which stands above the az configure one but i didn't want it to cheat so that's all i need to do here there's nothing more yeah 
So I have to specify the app service plan name and if there is none, it will just generate it for me. And what I also did is I chose build and deploy using GitHub Actions and that's awesome because that way I only need to do this once and it will be with every new Git push on my master branch, it will be deployed automatically for me. That saves me tons, a lot of work. You know, I have the whole CI CD pipeline in place for me without even touching um, DevOps or the actions by myself because it was just done inside the form XML, inside the Maven plugin. Yeah. And as you can see, I did it some days ago already. You can also rerun the script or the Maven plugin without any errors. That's also very good for testing purposes or if you want to show it like I'm doing it right now. Cool. So we have deployed the Azure app. And now I can access at myhipster.azurewebsites.net under slash VR to API docs, the Swagger API file. And that's the one I just need to copy and put into a JSON. And that's the one I will hand over to the front end team or the business intelligence department or the team in order to make it very pretty for the rest of the organization. Because to be honest, oops, sorry for that. I would be good with what I have here already. So as a backend developer, I'm, I'm fine with that. So I have my course. I can also see all the products here with my slash API slash products request. And if I specify an ID like this, I can also see the image URLs. And if I'm interested in the picture, I can just, you know, put it there and there it is. But yeah, as I was told so many times by my business um, department and also by the front end team, that's not enough for our users. So I'm very, very happy that David is gonna show us in a second in a pre-recorded session how to do um, the connection with Power Apps and how to build an actual um, productive ready app on Power Apps with the Power Platform. So there we go with the video. So now that Sandra has built that awesome application on the back end and given us the Swagger file, we can use that Swagger file to create the custom connector in the Power Platform. It will now easily give us access to the back end data and we can easily create front end and interfaces for the users in order to consume the complex logic in the back end. So let's get started. So to create a connector, we're going to head over to make.powerapps.com. And even though it says powerapps.com, you can consume this custom connector from other modules within Power Platform just the same. So on the left hand side, we're going to go to data, custom connectors, create custom connector. And then you can see you can create one from blank, use Azure services or import an open API, and lastly, import a Postman collection. For today, we're going to import an open API, which is just a much better name for a Swagger file. Right, so let's go and import the file that we received from Sandra. I'm going to call this myjhipster, and I'm going to select the Swagger file that we received earlier on. Click on Continue, and here you'll see that it's actually giving us a few options to tweak the Swagger file if we need to. We've got an image. It's not going to help anything to the users. This is more for the app makers to easily identify the, the connector that we're creating. The description, we can we don't need to change any of this. This is a very well-structured Swagger file. In the middle, we can go and specify an on-premises data gateway. Now, this is very exciting, and it means that we can connect to an API even though it's hosted on-premises. And what this will do is it'll connect an on-premises data gateway from the Power Platform and then consume that service, even though it's not available from the internet. At the bottom, we've got a host-based URL. We don't need to change any of those. All of that is looking good. Under security, we'll see that at the moment it's using no authentication. So you'll probably not get that in a production environment. Other options that you get to choose from are basic password, uh, username password. Uh, then you've got API keys or then the open auth mechanism. So regardless of what authentication your API uses, Power Platform will be able to consume that. If we go to definition, we will be able to see the five different operations or actions that we'll be able to perform against the API. First of all, we have get all products, and that allows us to just see a list of all of the products without any filters. 
can see it's using a get request and that's going to return uh, an array of objects if we go to create product that's where we create the product using a post request and we're going to send it the, the object in the, in the body of the payload then we've got an update product so then we're going to use a put to send the same object of the new updated properties to the API then we've got a get product using an IDS key and that's for viewing individual products and then lastly we've got delete product which is going to trash it so if we click on the test tab you'll see that it says that we need to create the custom connector before we can test it so it's a fair request let's go and create this and now that it's created you'll see that we need to create a connection using the connector so the connector is basically a schema that the connection then uses to create the connection to the, to the API so now we need to create a new connection that's fine we're going to click on create and there it's listing all the connections that I'm currently using in this environment on the left hand side I can go back to the custom connector in order to go and test it so we can click on the pencil icon head over to test and then we can actually start issuing some commands to the API to make sure we are getting back what we, we, we expect so if we click on test operation under get all products you'll see that there is a, an array of objects and all of that is styling that's looking good then we can go and create a, a new product so let's go and say title test123 test123 at this stage you shouldn't provide an ID that's something they could have done differently in this specific swagger file so we're going to just specify an image URL and we're going to give it a rating of 4 and let's test that so we can see in the, the status we're getting a 201 headers are looking fine we don't need any of that at the moment though and then in the body we're getting the newly created product as an object so that's looking good let's go and copy that object and because we're going to need it in the update product now so for the update product we're going to change the formatting of the request we're going to send it to raw so we can just simply go and paste the JSON on there so we can go and play around with it so let's change this to 124 124 change the rating to 3 and let's send that put request so we're getting a 200 and we can see that it's updated the data so all of that is working well now we're going to use the get product using ID we saw that that was ID number 50 so let's go and see what that gives us that returns the same object so we are styling now lastly let's go and delete that newly created product to make sure that it's no longer listed and there we go it's giving us a 204 and if we go back to the get all products if we test this we can see that uh, number 50 is no longer listed so it looks like our custom connector is working exactly the way that we want it to and we're now ready to jump into power apps to consume the data and the functions in this connector so we've created a brand new power app which we're now going to connect up to our custom connector and see how quickly we can get data into it so on the left hand side we're going to go and add our connection so there's my my J hipster we're going to add this to the application and now we can go and consume that data in the power app so we need an action to go and call this we will typically do that in the app start but for now we're just going to create an icon that's going to simulate a refresh so in the on select statement for this control we're now going to do a collect which is going to take data and write it into a local collection so we're going to call this collection col products and for the items that we're going to pass into it needs to be the response from our custom connector so we're going to now call the myj hipster you'll see there it is and if you now scroll down you'll see there is our get all products using get so we know that we don't need to specify any parameters for this function and we can now also close the collect statement so if we go and format this there's our very simple formula that's now going to interact with the custom connector so now that we're ready to receive the data we need to display it in the app and to do that we're going to use a horizontal gallery so let's just uh, space this over here and then we need to change the items property for this gallery to the collection that we created earlier so let's create that 
And now we can tell the controls inside of the gallery which items or which properties we want to display from this collection. So the image, we want to display that this item.image URL, the title, we typically want to display the title, and then the subtitle could be the description. Right, so there we go. And uh, if we now preview this, we should be getting some data. So let's hold thumbs. Let's click on the refresh icon. And there's our data in Power Apps. So we're now going to spend some time on building a nice app around this data, which we're going to fast forward through. And then we'll show you what it looks like in the end. So the application is built. We're ready to deploy this to our users. We can go and make sure it's saved. And uh, this whole time we've been working on an app that we haven't saved once, which means that it hasn't been automatically saved while we were making changes. So that's kind of dangerous. I wouldn't recommend that. So let's call this our product app. Product app and let's go and save this. And now at the time of publishing it, or saving and publishing it, the first version is automatically published. But we can now go and share this as well. So we can go and say that we want to make this available to the users in our organization. So we can go and specify groups or individuals that we want to send this to. So for now, let's send this to Mike Kent. And we can also, if you wanted to, make him a co-owner, which means that he'll also be able to modify this app going forward. In this case, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to share it with Mike Kent. And he would now get an invite in his mailbox saying that you've been added to this application, you can now go in and launch it at any time. So there's no MDM, none of those sort of things you need to worry about. And um, essentially you can now deploy this to all of the, your organization at a click of a button. So let's go and launch this. Let's actually go and play this. You'll see at the top there's an option to play. And that's now going to launch it as a normal user. So there's no more, I'm not running this in the studio now. So this is the final and real test to know if everything is working well. All right, so there's our, our application. We can see some test data and the last product is chair. So let's go and add a new one. Title is grass. And the description is because everyone needs their greens. And then the image URL is that picture over there. And you'll see immediately the, the picture renders, so that's fine. Let's give it a 4 out of 5, and now submit. Takes us back to the listing screen, and if we scroll to the right, we can see the record is added properly. So all of that's working well. Let's go and edit that, and let's say grass version 2. So this is now somehow better grass, and let's make that a 2 out of 5. So for whatever reason, the better grass wasn't better in the end. Let's go and submit this and see if it updates all of the records. So there's Grass 2 and we now only have a 2 out of 5. And then last test is to actually delete this. And if we click on delete, the record is gone and the last product is chair again. So it really is as simple as that to build a power app. And I can now let Sandra know that her application that she's built in the back end is now being surfaced on a user interface. And at the same time, we're ready to deploy this to the entire organization. So there's obviously endless possibilities you can do with this. Um, this is a very basic app and I try to keep it as minimalistic as possible to keep the demo short. Uh, but from here on forward, the skies are the limit. So like you saw, it's very easy to build Power Apps and it's very easy to connect them to REST APIs through custom connectors. And like we said earlier, it's really um, much better and much quicker to add value to your organization than having to build everything from scratch. So here are a few links that uh, we'd really recommend you work through. Um, some of them are about Azure, some of them about Power Apps, and uh, we'll definitely recommend that you work through these to get more familiar with the platform and what is achievable on both uh, on custom connectors on Azure or from Power Apps to Azure. And then also we're going to be in the dev.to um, site for the next half an hour. So if you have any questions or suggestions or anything that you want to discuss with us, uh, please reach out to us and then we're also available on Twitter and social streams if you want to have if you have any questions after the half an hour after this call. So thank you very much for attending and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.